What's up YouTube? It's your boy Nash here. Welcome back to the channel. And for today's video, I've got something very special for, for you guys because with with NXT Worlds Collide coming up, I figured I'd do something very special for you guys because I'm going to be doing a top 10 video. Now this is for those who watched NXT UK like I did the last like 5, 6 years, let's see, 2018, 19, 20, 20, 20, 20. about, yeah, 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 for the last like four, four or five years, you guys know that that NXT UK delivered on some of the on some of the greatest title matches in history. By the way, shout outs to Starbucks for the coffee, not sponsored. Co coffee's awesome. The perfect balance for pumps of vanilla, four pumps of hazelnut with, with a little bit of soy milk. Perfect. Anyway. <clears throat> anyway. Anyway. Where was I? Oh, right. Right. Sorry guys, I'm like tired as fuck. Anyway, you guys know that NXT UK has, has delivered on some of the greatest title matches in history, whether it, whether it was for the NXT UK title, the tag titles, or the women's title, but but also this one, the NXT UK Heritage Cup. Now, I'm going to be honest, this top 10 list mainly comprised of, of the previous champions before before Mark Coffey, which included A-Kid, Noam Dar, and Tyler Bate, because there were only a few champions in history, in, in fact, there were, there had only been a few, um, a few, only like, only a few champions in, in NXT UK. Obviously with, with the, obviously with the tag tiles, it was the, the, the Grizzly Young Veterans, the Grizzly Young Veterans, or, or, or is now the Dyad, um, um, Subculture, which was, uh, which was Mark Mark Andrews and Flash Morgan Webster, Gallus, which was um, uh, excuse me, which was Mark Coffey and Wolfgang, Pretty Deadly, Mustache Mountain, um, um, Ashton Smith and Oliver Carter, and of course now jo uh, Brooks Jensen and Josh Briggs. So there have only been six. Like six or seven tag, you know, six or seven tag team champions. The women's title has 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 only had like what four? Yeah, four four champions: Rhea Ripley, Tony Storm, Kaylee Ray, Mako Satomura, and of course the NXT UK title only had three. Actually, only had four: Tyler Bate, Butch, Gunther, and Ilya Dragunov. As well, and of course the Heritage Cup: A Kid, Tyler Bate, Noam Dar. And Mark Coffey now back to No and Dar, which we all know how how that one went, thanks to the help of Shaw Samuels who got fired. Anyway, anyway for this anyway for this video, I'm gonna be giving you guys giving you guys the top ten best NXT UK Heritage Cup matches of all time. Now, truth be told, there 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 were only like what twelve or thirteen matches. So I decided to take those and comprise them of ten, because the other three, in my opinion, were just not that good. Were just not that good. But the but this ten, these ten right here were absolutely insanely good. So hopefully, you guys enjoy this video. If you guys do and you guys want to see more top tens, more top ten videos in the future, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, smash that thumbs up button, turn on the notification bell, and follow me on all of my social media. Links will be in the description below. And as always, and as always, if you guys want to send me, want get, if you guys want to send me fan mail, the info will be in the description as well, especially now that we are on the road to 200 subscribers. I know it might not seem a whole lot, but to me that that is a very very big deal. So, Let's get to it. Kicking things off at number ten is one of the more is actually is actually one of the more recent matches is Mark Coffey versus Noam Dar 
on NXT UK July 14th, 2022. This was actually last month. This lasted the full the full six rounds. So for those who don't know about the British rounds match, the rules are simple. And I'll try to explain as best I can. E there are each round, each round is three minutes. So you have six three minute rounds, and it's best two out of three. So a pinfall, submission, or a count out picks you up a victory. Who once once a once a point is or once a fall is to, is is declared that round ends a disqualification re will result in in an immediate stoppage to to the match and whoever has has more points is the winner however once however if once all six rounds comes to an end whoever scores more points wins and it's best two out of three so first person to score two picks up the victory and Mo and I, I think mo I think all I think most of these went went like to round five or round six, and there's one that actually went beyond the distance. With round seven, it went to overtime, which I will in which that is the number one. But you guys are thinking, wait, what is that? Don't worry, don't worry, you'll know, you will know. But but this one, Mark Coffee versus Noam Dar, this went went the full. The full six rounds, eight. Um, the full six rounds, eighteen minutes. Mark Coffey ended up scoring two to one. This was actually a really good, a really good matchup because 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 NXT UK general manager John, Johnny Saint and his assistant Sid Scala made 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 the call to ban both both Joe Coffey. And and Shaw Shaw Samuels from ringside, and you guys know that that you know you know ever since ever since no Noam Dar became champion the first time around, you know Shaw has you know was holding you know almost doing you know his doing a little something he's you know he calls the East End booking, you know you know because he was like booking bets and you know making bets and all that, and. And so when Mark Coffey took took the title from from Noam Dar during you know during this time, Shaw Samuels went ballistic. He lost all the money. He lost every last bit of money possible. Even some of the clothes on on his back, which was which to me honestly was hilarious. But at the same time, it was just like, what? What the fuck? Like it's so like it's 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 so stupid. It, it was so stupid, but this was actually a, a a really good matchup because because of the fact that be, because of the fact that Noam Dar, in my honest opinion, and I'm gonna be perfectly honest, I don't I don't like him. I am not a fan. He he's he he's a cheater. Okay, he's a cheater. He broke Alicia Fox heart. We all know we all know that that story. But Noam Dar, I was one of the greatest champions in NXT UK history. Like no shot, no shot, no doubt, no doubt about it. There was no shot that anybody could match his level of of intensity and passion for being a champion. Nobody could, especially when it came to the NXT UK Heritage Cup. This one was act was really good. Again, as I said, this did go the distance which was insane however however in fact I think I made a huge full paw hang on a second I think I made a full paw Let's see. Let's see. Hang on, guys. I think I made a faux pas. I forgot to. So I'm on. So I I realized that at number eight, I forgot to put down the date, the the year that it happened. 
So, let me look. Okay. Did I have that one right? Let's see. Sorry guys, I completely fucked up. I, I I apologize guys. Yeah, okay. Okay, yep. Yep. Yep, I got it right. Anyway. Anyway. Anyway, this was a, 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 a really good matchup. This was actually the second to last um, time that we were ever going to see see the Heritage Cup get, get defended before Worlds Collide. Because not because about six weeks later, Noam Dar ended up regaining, ended up regaining, the, regaining the title with the help of Shaw Samuels, which was just utter bullshit. But this this proved this one proved that Mark Coffey had you know had a fair match without Shaw Samuels. You know you, you know with without Shaw Samuels, it's level playing field, and the and it's pretty much any you know anyone's match. You know, but when Shaw Samuels is is at ringside and he's and he's you know helping Noam Dar win, it's basically one sided. It's a it it it's a sure thing for for Noam Dar. But but since we are on the topic of Shaw Samuels, we come in and this comes in at number nine, which is A Kid versus Shaw Samuels on February eighteenth, twenty twenty one. This was actually a very interesting matchup because this one went 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 to round five, and the match lasted 11 minutes 23 seconds with a kid scoring two to one. This is th this was a weird one because at the time, at the time Noam Dar was just was mainly focused on himself. He he was focused on his on his talk show Supernova Sessions, which in which don't get me wrong, Supernova Sessions was somewhat entertaining, I'll give it that, but, but it was mostly Shaw that was doing all the fighting, he, you know, he was doing all the fighting, he was, you know, you know, trying to pick up a victory for, you know, you know, for him and, and for Dar, but it really didn't work out so well, if you will, and, and this matchup was basically proof that Noam Dar needed to up his game and try to be be a champion because ever since he got to to WWE in the in in the Cruiserweight Classic back in twenty what, what was it twenty sixteen for if I if I remember if I remember right he um he didn't win a single championship not not one. Championship. He didn't win any titles over in over on NXT. He didn't win the Cruiserweight title. He didn't even win a single title in NXT UK when he got to NXT UK, with the exception of, of the Heritage Cup, which di didn't come around until which di didn't come come around come around until October twenty eighth of twenty twenty one, which I believe. Which I believe is actually at number six. Which I'll talk about that here. Here in here in in a second, but that match, but this matchup, A Kid and Shaw Samuels was a, was basically a wake up call for for um. It was a it was a it was it was a wake up call for Noam Dar to try to be a champion in which. He actually did that, which we will get to here in in a bit. But coming in at number eight is actually one of the most is actually one of the only times that a Heritage Cup match would ever go to a draw. The only time. Noam Dar versus A Kid. January 20th, 2022. This was earlier this year. This went the full six rounds and, and it was tied 
one to one. This proved, this proved that a kid had what it took to try to regain, try to regain the title, but also try to, but also prove, basically prove to, um, prove to Noam Dar that he's got that instinct, he's got the tenacity, the passion to regain the title, in which he came close, but unfortunately this ended, but unfortunately this one ended in a draw, and unfortunately Noam Dar retained the title, which was, which was an instant classic, it was an instant classic, I know that I should have put, put this at like, put this like in the top three, but the reason I chose, I chose not to, was because, was because of the fact that, if I remember right, Shaw Samuels actually got involved in, in the match numerous times, and that was the reason why, why the match ended in a draw, was because of Shaw Samuels. But coming in at number, but coming in at number seven, Coming in at number seven is is a very interesting matchup. This was a very unique matchup, but this, this one this one was so good. A kid versus Tyler Bate, December twentieth, twenty sorry sorry December tenth, twenty twenty. This was actually the second the second NXT UK Heritage Cup um, match, the second ever, which was insane. This was a really good one because this one went the distance, the full the full six rounds, but the match lasted 13 minutes 51 seconds with nine seconds remaining, and Akin ended up picking up the victory over Tyler Bate to win the title. But, but, but of course, of course, too, we know that Tyler Bate did win, win, ended up winning the title title eventually, which we'll we'll get to that in in a little bit, but. This was be this was a match of two, two fan favorites. A kid, Tyler Bay, two fan favorites, going at it for a shot. You know, for a shot to be the best. You know, this was a match to see. You know, to see who is the best, who has the drive, who has the passion, who had. You know, the killer instinct to beat to win the NXT the NXT UK Heritage Cup. Or I guess in or, or I guess in A Kid's case, retain the title and A Kid basically proved it. He proved it and Tyler Bay Tyler Bay, there there's a reason why he's known as the big strong boy. He's got he's got the stamina, he's got the cardio, he's got the the power, the speed, the agility. He has basically all the tools to be a champion. You know, there there you know, there's a reason why he you know he was the first ever NXT UK champion, and why he won, won the won the tournament to begin with. Spoilers, I know. Spoilers, I know. But it's it's NXT, and um, they like to spoil things. So it is it is what it is. I'm not gonna judge. But th this matchup was w probably one of the best matches that A-Kid ever had, second to what was coming up at number one. Which, I'm not going to spoil. I'm not going to spoil. But we do got to move on to number number six. Which is, which is, which, speak, since, since we're on the topic of Tyler Bay, Noam Dar versus Tyler Bay, October 28th, 2021. This one went, went the full rounds, the full six rounds, lasted... This one lasted 14 minutes, 46 seconds, two to one. Tyler, uh, no, no, Dar won. And if I and if I'm right on this, and I drop my pen. Sorry, guys, drop my pen. Drop my pen. Have it here. Anyway, I believe Shaw Samuels and Trent Seven were actually banned from ringside, but. This was an interesting one because because Tyler Bate was still the NXT UK, was still the NXT UK champion, and this caused a lot of confusion because because you guys know if you, that if you throw in if you throw in the white towel if you throw a white towel in, into the ring it's considered a surrender especially in WWE it's 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 considered a surrender and and you lose. 
This one was no different because um, Shaw Samuels had a plan and it actually worked out because Shaw Samuels took the took the British strong style towel and Trent Seven tried tried to take take it away take it away from Shaw Samuels, but when Shaw but Shaw Samuels let go of the towel. Force, which forced Trent, Trent Seven to throw it into the ring, and everything went downhill. It all went downhill from there, and we never got to see that rematch again. We never saw that rematch ever. Would we? Will we ever see it again? It's possible, but we don't know. But we don't really know know if if or when we're ever going to see it. But. This was, but aside from that, this was a, a really good matchup because even with, because as I said, you know, you know, you know, with the matchup between Mark Coffey and Noam Dar, with this matchup, without, without Trent Seven, without Shaw Samuels at ringside, it was level playing field, but it just was not meant, meant to be because Noam Dar had, had a plan and it was well executed to say the very least. But coming in at number five, we have Noam Dar versus Joe Coffey, March tenth, twenty twenty-two. This was actually a pretty good one because because you guys know that that with because it wasn't too long after that, two about it was about twenty-one days, two weeks later. No, um, Noam Dar defeated Mark Coffey to retain the NXT UK Her Heritage Cup, and then of course again Mark Coffey got you know got got his rematch, ended up win winning the title only for Noam Dar to regain it later on. But when it comes to Gallus, any any one member of Gallus or even all three members of Gallus, they know how to how to put on a show. They know how to put on a great title match and this one and this matchup proved it this matchup proved it because Joe Coffey has had what one what what two three opportunities like uh, I, I I would say like two three maybe four opportunities at the NXT UK title You know, you know, you know, against Butch and Gunther and of course Ilya Dragunov, but it just wasn't. But it just wasn't meant meant to be. And this one was no different because Noam Dar, again, to being the typical heel, always found found the way to cheat. This one lasted lasted five rounds. You know, it went it went 17 minutes, 43 seconds, two to one. This was. Oh really? The, the, this was a very hard hitting match because Joe Coffey loves to hit hard. He will punch you in the face as hard as he can, and love it. That's that is Joe Coffey for you. But I'm gonna be honest. I'm I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I feel like Joe Coffey should have won. Should have won this one, mainly mainly because of the fact that the only titles that Gallus ever brought, the only titles that were ever home to Gallus were the NXT UK Tag Team Titles, and and eventually, the Heritage Cup, which again came in and and number ten, which I talked about earlier, earlier on. But I feel like I, I feel like Joe Coffey should have should have won this one. But at the same time, it's shot. It's it's Noam Dar. He always finds a way to win. This one was no different. But coming in at number four, this was actually I believe this was the one that I was talking about before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was the one, the, the one that I was talking about before. Hell of a matchup. Tyler Bate versus A Kid. This was the match that I was that I was that I was talking talking about before. I when I when when I was talking about the match between A Kid and Tyler Bate the first time. The second time, second time was the charm for Tyler Bate because he, 
went toe to toe with A Kid again. This time, <clears throat> this time it was five months later, on May twentieth, twenty twenty one. This one went the full six rounds. Lasted fifteen minutes, fifty eight seconds, almost literally almost the entire time limit, and it was scored one to nothing. One to nothing. Think about that, guys. One to nothing. That's how that's how insane this match was. That's how good this match was. This one, hands down, one of the best matches ever. And I say that because because of the fact that, as I said, this proves that you have you have two fan favorites who would do, who were doing everything in their power to win a match. This one was no different. Like there was no tell with. This one, there was no telling who who was gonna win. It was literally, it was it was literally anybody's matchup. But once, once, uh, once, uh, <laughs> once the match went went the full distance, um, yeah, it was basically just a sure thing for Tyler Bate, plain and simple. But I, but but I gotta admit this matchup just proves that Tyler Bate he still has it he still has what it takes to be a champion and this time around is no different different because obviously obviously you guys know this coming Thursday on NXT UK he's he's in the finals of the NXT UK Heritage Cup sorry the NXT UK title tournament um, taking on his former best friend Trent Seven which was. If you guys saw that heel turn, it was not pretty. It was not pretty at all. Just saying. Just saying. But again, this matchup, A Kid versus Tyler Bate, round two, worked out perfectly for Tyler Bate. This one went the full distance, scored one to nothing. I don't even know how to. I don't, I don't even know how to describe it. It was just that insane. But coming in at number three, we are now in the top three. And this one was one of those ones that was based. This one was a match based on respect, you know, because when it came when when it came to Sam Gradwell, he was always he was always the type of guy that won that wanted respect and wanted people to put respect in the name. That is NXT UK, and the name that is Sam Sam Gradwell. Because Sam Gradwell, people forget, was actually a part of the first ever NXT UK tournament back in 2017, which in which I don't think he got pretty. In which I don't think he got. I don't think he got pretty far. I want to see about something really fast. Hang on, guys. Let's see. Okay, well, that can go away. Let's see. Hmm. Let's see. Let's see, NXT UK Championship Tournament. Oh, 
Oh, wait, maybe I should put in put WWE United Kingdom Championship Tournament. Let's see about that. Let's see. I want the one for 2017. Here we are. Here we are, night one. So the first tournament... There we go. Sorry, sorry guys. I apologize if, if, if I'm taking forever. My laptop is slow, and it wants to be a fucking dick. Well, well, while this is going... Because apparently it doesn't want to work. There we go. Finally it decides to work. Okay, so... So the... So the participants... You can fuck off. Thank you. So, so, so the participants were, were Tyler Bate, Tucker, Jordan Devlin, Danny Birch, uh, Trent Seven, H.C. Dyer, Wolfgang, Tyson T-Bone, um, uh, Mark Andrews, Dan Maloney, James Drake, Joseph Connors, Pete Dunn, Roy Johnson, Saxon Huxley, and Sam Gradwell. Sam Gradwell actually, I believe, made it to, um... I think he made it to the semis? I think he made it towards, um... I mean, I don't, I don't remember, I don't remember, I don't think I ever got, got the chance to watch, but... He did get he, he did get a little far far in in the tournament, but uh, but ended up getting getting um, getting el getting eliminated, which was pretty which was pretty bad. But um, he ended up suffering a knee injury during 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 this time, and this that tournament that tournament proved that Sam Gradwell. Had had what it, had what it took to be a champion. I apologize if if, if I took forever. I, I apologize, guys. My laptop is just being stupid. But this proved that Sam Gravel had what it took to be a champion. But this matchup coming in at number three, which is Noam Dar versus Sam Gravel, November twenty fifth, twenty twenty one, was basically proof of it because because. Sam, both both Gradwell and Dar both scored a point, but once we got in into the fourth round, the match went went ten minutes fifty four seconds, and Noam Dar ended up scoring two to one. This proved that Sam Gradwell had what it took to be a champion. But even now, you know, even you know, even like even you know, like after he came back from his from his career career threatening knee injury he still couldn't grasp you know the you know what it took to be a champion you know but but slowly but surely when he started to get over with the fans he started to understand what it took to be a champion you know and this one this matchup was no different but we do got to move on into number two Tyler Bay versus Mark Coffey July 15th 2021 this was Basically, basically British Strong Style versus Gallus all all over again. This one went five rounds, ten minutes, twelve seconds, two to one. Tyler Bay ended up winning this one, but this proved that. But this this matchup again, again another battle of two fan favorites, Gallus and British Strong Style slash Mustache Mountain, having having the. You know the mental capacity to be a champion, and and Mark Coffey already had you know had what it took what it took to be a champion, but it wasn't until you know obviously at number ten, July fourteenth, twenty twenty two, 
was when he grasp, grasped the NXT UK Heritage Cup. But, you guys are probably wondering, what's, what's the number one? It was actually the finals of the tournament to crown the first ever champion. A-Kid versus Trent Seven. You guys are wondering, how long did this match go? This actually went beyond beyond the distance. This this one lasted lasted overtime. Round seven, 21 minutes, 20 seconds. Yeah. This one lasted over 20 minutes. Which was insane. And this one, you know, obviously. Obviously, once the end of round six came, it was tied one to one, and we needed a clear-cut winner. So they decided to to, to go into overtime, and A Kid picked up the victory. This was literally one. This was probably by far the greatest NXT UK Heritage Cup match I had ever seen ever since since the title first came came to pass during this time. And during and during this time, this was when. When the restrictions were the you know when the restrictions for you know of COVID nineteen were still there, but they were slowly you know you know step by step, stage by stage, you know were starting to lift up a bit, you know, and I I, I know that over in over in over in the UK, um, the restrictions are, are are still there, but they're not as bad, they're not as bad as they were like last year because last year the restrictions were just like. Oh, horrendous but I would consider this one and number one the greatest heritage cup match of all time hands down in fact all ten of these absolutely insane but I do want want your guys thoughts let me know in 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 the comments below what your what what was your favorite NXT UK heritage cup match if you watched NXT UK and that is going and that brings me to to the question of the day, which is obviously that, which is which is obviously that, was your favorite NXT UK Heritage Cup Championship match of all time? Let me know down in the comments below, and that will do it for today's video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you guys smash that thumbs up button. If you guys are new to the channel and you guys want more top 10 videos in the future, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell. So you guys do not miss out on any new content that comes your way. And make sure you guys follow me on all, all of my social media. Links will be in the description below. As will the info to my fan mail. The info will also be in the description as well. And on that, this is your boy Nash. Signing out.